Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Star Wars Episode 2, Attack of the Clones. So, um, it's gonna be a spoiler review, so spoiler alert, but, uh, it, I'm gonna talk about probably Episodes 1 through 9, maybe even Solo and, uh, New, uh, Rogue One. So, spoiler alert for all of those, if you somehow haven't seen them, and... I know that there's so many reviews and commentaries and things about this whole franchise from Star Wars that if you've watched enough of it, I'm there's probably nothing I'm going to say is something that you haven't heard somewhere else before, possibly, if you've watched enough of it. But that's okay, because it's my channel, so you're going to get my opinion if you're watching, so welcome. <laughs> um, so, without further ado, just rolling right into this. To start off with... The opening scroll says several thousand solar systems have, I don't know, rebelled or are thinking about doing whatever, something, 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 from the Republic. Which is another reason why the 400 members of the Resistance in Episode 8 made zero sense. Because that was the entirety of the Resistance to the First Order that had enough to have all them fucking ships. <laughs> and yet, like, thousands of solar systems in this time period. Like, there's no way. There's no way that 400 people make sense. Anyhow, moving on. So, Queen Amidala is now a senator. Seems like a bit of an odd career path, but I ain't. Um, she says that, um, or I'm sorry, like, the queen, or whatever, the decoy, when she, like, gets blown up and she's like, I'm sorry, my, you know, I'm sorry, I failed you. And it's like, in what way did you fail her by getting blown up? You served exactly your purpose, which is to get killed instead of her. So, mission accomplished. Don't know why you're saying, sorry, I failed you. You didn't. But, anywho. Uh, it's fun that this is set ten years after. Uh, just, like, that big of a time jump when I think there was only a couple years difference between episode one and two, and then they obviously switched out the Anakin actor. <laughs> um, so that's fun. Uh, but, man... Rewatching this now, because just just rewatching this now, it is such an awkward as fuck argument for Anakin and Obi Wan to be having in front of the senator that they've been charged with protecting. Like, man, if fucking I I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of jobs out there where if you said that shit in front of your client to your boss that your boss would be like, all right, we're just gonna we're just gonna take you off this case. We're gonna write you up, we're gonna demote you, we're gonna like dock your pay, fire you, something, like never gonna have you in front of clients again. Like, what the fuck, man? You're having that level of argument right in front of her as like your introduction to like, these are the people that are supposed to be competent and protecting you. And we're just gonna have this fucking awkward as fuck argument right there. And other people are noticing it that it's awkward. So, man, just <laughs> just just I felt awkward watching that. <laughs> Anywho, um, I think it is utterly, utterly ridiculous that it's been 10 years, they established that, oh, it's been 10 years, and you never once found time to go back and get your mother. Or, because, oh, you're so busy Jedi training, you never found, I don't know, to say send somebody from the Republic with, I don't know, maybe some Republic credits, or maybe some things that they bought with Republic credits that they could then barter for your mother, and then take her to somewhere, I don't know, maybe Alderaan or something, just somewhere that the Republic actually has sway, like, I don't know, it just, it seems super, super stupid planning that, hey, these people that we're gonna give, like, superpower training to, we're not gonna, we're not gonna make sure their loved ones are safe, we're just gonna leave them in slavery, and oh, by the way, you're gonna leave them there too, you're not gonna be like, hey, maybe I should check on my slave mother, nope, nope, gotta wait 10 years and, and then go, dumbass um so lazy writing so again and i know i said this in the last review spoilers if you haven't seen that last review but do you remember when this trilogy was the worst thing that had happened to star wars i gotta be honest with you i remember a couple of years ago when i rewatched four five and six and like four was meh five i remember being my favorite and six you had again spoilers you had ewoks so fucking care bears taking out fully armored stormtroopers so, the fact that people wax nostalgic about this, the original trilogy to begin with, 
You put on some real serious rose-colored glasses for that. But then, when this trilogy came out, people were like, this is the worst thing to happen to Star Wars. It's so terrible. George Lucas has lost his touch. He needs to, you know, move on, like, get out, and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Remember that? Remember the good old days when this was the worst trilogy to people? And then 7, 8, 9 came out, and they were like, oh my god, this is the worst thing ever. And then Solo came out, and people were like, man, what the fuck? <laughs> So, you know, perspective. This is not the worst Star Wars out there. But it is dumb. Things like the fact that he never went and got his mother. Um, also, so, they they do the chase sequence. So the, the, lizard, or the centipede things try and take out Leia. He jumps on him. And you might be wondering, like, how did they find each other? And how did he find her and, like, get back in the car and whatnot? It's pretty easy. It's the Force. The Force helps guide them. It helps bring them together. It helps them track on the things and able to keep those in mind and predict things. It all works. What doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me is that, like, the chick shoots the, the side of the thing, which, for some reason, ha getting impacted on your machinery magically turns on the electricity for it, but whatever. So she flies through there, you know, before the electricity starts. And then Obi-Wan's like, oh, watch out for the power couplings. And then they fly through this thing. And they're both clearly getting, like, electrocuted. And then continue on their way. Like, they've been, like, people get tased more seriously than what they experienced there. So why did you make a thing like, watch out for the power couplings? Ah! Okay, we made it through. Cool. Carry on. I don't know. It just, it was weird. It was weird and distracting to me. Uh, another thing that was weird and distracting is that the chicks who was, like, firing at them... The, the shapeshifter, her uh, blaster had the TIE fighter blaster noise. Like, the, the TIE fighter fired its lasers, a ship-sized thing is the same noise that they used for her handheld blaster. A little odd. Um, yeah. Also, what I think is just uber, uber dumb is that, so Senator Amidala has someone trying to kill her so that she won't get through this bill through the Senate that she's been trying to for, I guess, years? So she runs away before the Senate has acted on that boat. Seems like they got what they needed anyway, right? Like, they didn't, even, they didn't even need to kill her at that point because she's trying to get some bill through, and she's at first like, I'm going to stay here, and then, oh, okay, it's dangerous, so I'm going to leave now, but I didn't work years for this bill to come to fruition just to leave before it gets voted on, except that I am doing that and going to leave the dumbass who sadly did not become Darth Jar Jar. I really, really, really like Darth Jar Jar theory and wish they'd gone with it, but they didn't. I feel like even after this movie, they could have brought it back and done Darth Jar Jar anyway in 3, but they didn't, and it's dumb that they didn't. But anywho, since he is not Darth Jar Jar and is just left as a dumbass, why would you leave him in charge of anything? And then once he is in charge, like, you are now like, it's so dangerous for me that I'm getting assassination attempts. So I'm going to leave you in charge, Jar Jar. Goodbye. Have fun you being the one that gets assassinated. Okay. <laughs> so, I know that people have criticized Hayden Christensen uh, acting. Have you seen Jumper? Have you seen some of his other movies? He's an excellent actor, okay? And I love the part where, like, so they're, so Anakin and Padme are on her planet, and she's, like, discussing the security situation, and she's like, oh, no, no, he's not even a, he's not a Jedi Master, he's just a young Padawan, and no, we're gonna do what I want, we're gonna go this way, and he's like, uh, excuse me, I'm in charge of your security here. Like, and then she's like, yeah, so I'm familiar with it, like, this area, that's why I'm here, so maybe take my advice. And I love that, like, semi-close-up shot that they do, where he's just like, like, that, just that deep breath to be like, yes, of course, let's go. Like, I like that because, A, excellent acting, B, like, that's what you should have done instead of arguing with Obi-Wan, and I feel like maybe he learned that lesson. Um, <laughs> maybe not, but that's what I'm just, that's what I'm gonna go with. So, yeah. And look, I know that she was on this planet, or, like, she's familiar with this planet and whatnot, but in, like... I don't know, 10 minutes, there's maybe five different scenes with her and him on this planet, and she wears a different outfit in every single one of them, like elaborate outfits. Like, why 
Do you have so many up? I feel like somebody in the art department or the the, uh, the costume design department just like, I don't know, like snorted something over the weekend was like, yes, I'm going to design all these outfits. Ah! And then they made them and like, yes. Oh, sh oh, there's so many of them. Okay. Um, yeah, no, we're gonna we're gonna use every one of them in this movie. No, yeah, no, that's exactly why I designed them was so that you could use every single one of them in the movie. You're gonna and you're gonna like it because I spent all this money of the costume department's budget on all of these outfits. Anywho, a lot of outfits for her. Um, also, I st like getting back to the ten year thing. I think it's so ridiculous that again, Anakin has ten years to save his mom, but now that he has been charged with protecting Padme, a senator for the Galactic Republic, and that he kind of has a thing for, suddenly now is when he has to leave. That's stupid. Lazy riding bullshit. Um, <sighs> some of the things I do like is the sound design. Once again, top-notch sound design, other than that weird uh, blaster type fighter thing. But, like, the seismic charges, how they Im implemented that... I feel like it was just like a taste, a taste of episode eight's epic, like, light speed destructo thing. Yes, the this, this physics of that were stupid, universe breaking, but the sound design and whatnot was excellent. Yes, I know, it was mostly science, but the sound design and size of charges, also a sweet. Um, <laughs> and even here, we have episode two of having a tracking beacon on a thing, enabling them to track it through light space. And literally, it's just a handheld thing that he chucked, and it magnetized on there. You don't think that... Like, that was, a, that was a tiny thing, and that's all he needed to track them through hyperspace. So why, why were they so surprised about being tracked through hyperspace in episode 8? Still the dumbest thing. Um, I like that the, uh, the ship that Jango Fett flies around in, that thing has the fastest fucking firing lasers I have seen in the universe. <laughs> in, in their universe. Like, just... Nothing else fires lasers nearly that rapidly. The closest thing is uh, in Rogue One, that handheld, like, the, the Gatling gun laser thing that the blind guy's friend operates. That, that's the closest thing, and that's handheld. But I think it's neat. It makes, it makes Bubba Fett's, or Django Fett's, whichever one, whichever one currently owns it, uh, it makes his ship a bit more unique, and I like that. That's fine. And then they find C-3PO. I was enjoying a universe and a movie without C-3PO, and then he fucking comes here, and he's the worst. I hate C-3PO. I do love the theme song for Padme and Anakin's, like, love song. It's such a good addition to the Star Wars themes. It's just absolutely fantastic, and it's such a memorable one. And, yeah, so, excellent job once again to John Wayne. Um, so when they're in the factory, so they, like, open it up and they look, and with the throughput... With how fast those conveyor belts and things are moving, think about how many droids they are making per hour with how fast that is moving. Just how fast. Like, I don't care if it takes, like, 10 hours or, like, 10 days of gradually moving through all these, like, conveyor belts to make one droid. But the fact that, like, you have these things, this whole factory pumping out where it's like, zzz, one done, zzz, one done, zzz, one done. And... Like, that's how fast they are, and clearly they are ready to go, like, immediately, because C-3PO is involved in the final fight, which, fuck C-3PO, but that thing, you saw that one being made, and it was ready to go. So, with how, with how many they are making per hour, there is no way that 200,000 clones will have a chance, I don't care how much smarter they are, or whatever, because every single one of those droids just needs a gun. And so 200,000 total that took years and years of development and cloning and processing and teaching and guiding and growing and yada, yada, yada. There's no way that 200,000 of them is going to have a single chance against however many drones this place can build. And this is just one factory because I doubt that it was the Trade Federation's only factory that they built for the Naboo thing. And they've had 10 years to make more droids for that. And from what I understand, I don't think the Clone Wars had started yet so you know because at the end of the Yoda's like begun the clone wars have so yeah i don't know that's just it's just uh, it, it seems like they just were really trying to make the clone wars comment from episode four work and i don't know that it does but whatever um 
Also, the CGI C-3PO in the factory, every time they switch like the, C the CGI version of him, it is so, so obvious. But it's not worse than Rubber Neo from The Matrix Reloaded. And so given the time frame in which this movie was made, I feel like that's acceptable. And they did much better with the creatures in this one than in episode one. So, like, you know, the three things that were supposed to murder, or sorry, execute our heroes, they did a really good job with the CGI of those characters. And yes, whenever there's a large number of clones and droids on screen, it doesn't quite hold up to today. I'd still say that it's better than Ant-Man and, and the Quantumania. Not a high bar, but, um, you know, it, I feel like Unreal Engine 5 and some of the newer video games that have come out, like, they look as good, if not better, in many of the cinematic shots than what is on this. But you gotta keep in mind of when this movie was made and the technology available. So, I find it acceptable. Like, it wasn't too distracting because it was just, like, a constant level, other than C-3PO being weirdly terrible. Uh, there wasn't, like, a constant, like, massive shift in the quality of the CGI or... Because most of the sets were CGI anyway, <laughs> there wasn't a huge difference in the sets versus the CGI sets. You know what I mean? Like, eh. So it's consistent. And you kind of start to ignore it after a while. <sighs> it is such a waste of life of Jedi that they had in that uh, last battle. The opening battle of the Clone Wars on Genosha, where they had like 50 to, I don't know, 100 Jedi down to, what, a handful? Five? Ten? In, like, Jedi are not shock troops. And when you have 100 Jedi versus 500, you know, laser bolts coming at them at any given point, of course they're going to lose. They can't deflect them all. And it just, it was such a, such a giant waste of Jedi life. And that's really annoying to me, that they were, like, that they would just tactically waste all of these Jedi troops for this, when they were massing all of those cloners, uh, for this other battle that, yes, that battle looked sweet. It was an interesting visual battle that had a lot of good energy. But I feel like you could have spared a few more clone troopers to save the Jedi, which are infinitely more important, in my opinion. <sighs> Whatever. Um, so, yeah, just kind of devastating to, to... And then, like, this battle, again, there's only... I think there's only 200,000 of them. And this battle, there's a lot of, there's a lot of infantry that gets hit with pretty big you know, missiles and rockets and whatever else. So, yeah, pretty devastating to clone numbers, too. Uh, and once again, C-3PO and his stupid, stupid and annoying quips, like, oh, I'm quite beside myself. Fuck off. I did not find them interesting. Jar Jar, funny. C-3PO, stupid and annoying. Hate him. Um, just everything he does. Also, I do think that it's a little weird that they were able to mass all these clone troopers for this awesome battle, and that there was zero warning about it, to Count Dooku and his little, like, his other high-ranking buddies watching this execution. You'd think that the commanders that were like, uh, yeah, we got a huge contingent of, uh, warships coming in from, uh, hyperspace. They just, they're, uh, they're entering the planet atmosphere now and, uh, getting ready to land, so maybe we should do something about that. Alert the generals of the current... Nope, just gonna let them continue watching the execution. Okay, fine. That's fine. That's fine. Um, <laughs> also one last thing. I did forget before I rewatched this, that, like, Dooku was a lightning wielder, but it is neat that, and I think this, that Yoda is the only one that we ever see that has the ability to either deflect or absorb force lightning. Everybody else has to use their lightsaber, but Yoda is the only one that can, like, he deflects it, and he also, like, absorbs it, and I think that's such a cool thing that we have seen nobody else do at this point in time, as far as my knowledge goes. Again, only live-action movies, and honestly, most of the live-action TV shows I've watched, too, probably not going to continue, but... I will not watch the animated TV shows at all, period dot. Don't bother asking me to in the comments, because I'm not going to do it. Anywho, so this movie, clearly better than one. Not great overall, but not terrible. It's enough to rewatch. It has some fun sequences. So, yeah, I mean, that's all I have about this one. Thanks for watching. Bye.